Okay, it's on sorry, now. Sorry, I don't understand you. He quickly turned the Okay, it's on. So he was going to give up his guarantee. All right, well, thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us. It is past 5.30, so I'm going to we'll get going here for the sake of everyone's time. Um, Leland is recording this for purpose of minutes for both of the uh, uh, meetings. So um, I will have the uh, chairs call their meetings to order. Uh, let's start with the uh, city council. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I call the Joint Planning Commission um, City Council CIP meeting. Call the roll, please. Roll yep. Yes, sorry. Tess? Here. Johnson? Here. Mitchell? Here. Nowak? Here. And Wallagore? Here. All right, it looks like I'm the acting chair tonight. I'll call the uh, City Planning Commission uh, joint CIP meeting to order, please. Kirshner? Here. Gilmore? Here. Van Wagner? Here. Hubaltz? Here. Saburn? Lewis? Austin? Here. Boyda? Yes, here. All right, well, thank you all. Um, Show the right to the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, thank you everybody for taking the time out. I know this is a strange meeting day for everybody, but there annual uh, CIP meeting and again just for I think everyone here has done this before at least once but nevertheless um, this is the meeting where we talk about our capital improvement program and uh, you know over the next course of next year and following years after that and this is the uh, required by the planning enabling act to just really tie our comprehensive plan to our budget so that's why we're here um, we staff the various department heads will come up We'll talk about our very, uh, the various projects. We'll specifically talk about the ones that have changed or potentially have been added new. Um, and that's what we'll talk about today. However, if there are any questions regarding old projects or any questions at all about the process, by all means, uh, ask them away. And if there are any questions at the end, we'll address those as well. Um, so that being said, um, usually we'll jump right in. We, uh, we're going to start with Joel today. He's a uh, little slightly under the weather. You may notice, you may not. But um, we'll ha have him come up first and talk about there, please. Thank you, Adam. Actually, I had about 34 projects tonight, but I'm going to uh, take it down to the three. Um, joking. Um, but the ones that we, we are looking at, um, uh, of course, the number one project is going to be our replacement of our patrol vehicles. Uh, it's imperative that we get on a schedule and stay on a scheduled replacement of our patrol vehicles. They are the bread and butter of what we do. They are the office for the officers. Um, unfortunately, last year, um, we saw across the board with all manufacturers a significant increase in the cost. Um, also, a lot of the manufacturers are starting to go to hybrids. We're all starting to wait and see where that's going to go. Uh, there was talk that at some point they were going to be simply doing all hybrid vehicles. So it's a wait and see type of process. But right now, Ford, which is the primary manufacturer that we deal with, the Ford utility, um, indications are they're, they're going to still maintain the, the uh, combustion engine here for the next probably two, three years at the very least. So we're, we're hoping. Projected cost with that, um, and again, we saw, I think last year, typically we plan on about a 5% increase per year. It's kind of a general rule for vehicles. And last year, I think that they hit 18% increase. So that was unexpected, um, and that was uh, an unwelcome surprise, but we were able to do some trimming elsewhere and, and make up that difference. Um, with those projected amounts, uh, we are looking at this coming year, uh, scheduled replacement of two patrol vehicles. Um, I have a number of 96.5 in there. That's gonna not only be for the vehicles, but that also incorporates anywhere from I think it's about $12,000 worth of the specialized equipment that goes into the vehicles. That's our prisoner compartments um, and other specialized gear that's going to go in there that does not include our radios, that does not include our in-car cameras, that does not include um, our in-car computers, our MDTs and so forth. But it's, it's the other equipment that has to go into the vehicle to make it a functional police vehicle. So. Um, the good part is, is that Ford 
in particular has maintained this body style and the projections are they're going to maintain this utility body style. So if that happens, and we're, we're, we believe it will, as we rotate out the older vehicles, we'll be able to transfer a lot of that equipment, prisoner compartments and so forth, into the newer vehicles and we should see a, a significant savings down the road in that respect. Uh, moving on to the second project, again related to the vehicles, we're looking of course in two new um, mobile uh, 800 radios for the cars, they got to have radios, and at some point, um, we those those radios are very durable, we've had very good luck with our mobile radios, so again, like the other equipment, at some certain point, we shouldn't have to be buying them on a yearly basis, because we usually get, um, I'm guessing, seven to eight years out of each radio before uh, there, we start seeing issues with them. And then the last project, Again, very important for officer safety is, of course, our bulletproof vest. Uh, these are all updated projects, by the way. Uh, for years, our department has has um, participated in what's called the bulletproof vest program through the federal <coughs> government, and it's where um, um, if and everybody always qualifies. We've never been turned down once. They will reimburse us up to 50% or 50% of our vest and our, our concealable body armor. <coughs> And so uh, we have to buy them up front. We have to have the initial funds there. And then once we get all that, I submit everything to uh, the federal government and we're reimbursed 50% for the cost of the project. So that's always been a, a, great, um, a great program to be involved in. Does anybody have any questions about, about the three projects? With the vehicles, you mentioned that there were some installations that are not included in the cost of the project. Are you able to transfer, for example, the dash cam from an older vehicle into a new vehicle? Yeah. Have to do? You, no. What we do, Matt, is that, <clears throat> um, and the one thing I forgot to mention was about the 40% project cost. We normally get assist. Normally, I have not always, but typically um, through the USDA. But uh, as far as the transfer equipment in general, um, yes, mm -hmm. we retire a patrol vehicle. And this is something we've, we've been discussing also. For example, right now, I'm driving a 2008 Impala for an administrative travel car type of thing. Um, and so that vehicle is on its last leg. You know, it's 12 years old. Um, so my plan is, as we um, will get rid of that vehicle, or City Hall, if it's still manageable for a couple more years so they can get a few more miles out of it, I'll go then to one of the older scout cars myself. Um, but my intentions are is to leave that fully equipped uh, so we won't be depleting the fleet. And so um, if an officer needs to grab it for a parade or for if we have several officers on, that vehicle will be also available for general patrol use. But yeah, all the equipment that um, the in-car camera, um, when we switch out an old vehicle, we take it down, they're called upfitters, and they're companies that specialize in installing emergency equipment into vehicles and they literally strip one car out and they'll install that equipment in, into the new one. So a lot of, inf a lot of uh, the equipment is transferred over the years, time and time again. So, and, and one last thing also is that we, every year we have applied for the last, I wanna say nine years, nine or 10, we've applied to the USDA for um, grant funds uh, that have helped uh, finance uh, Forty percent of our project for our patrol cars, um, and I believe they they have financed six out of the seven projects. Where I think there was only once where we were not awarded funds. But so we've had very good luck. It's one of these things that you we put in for. We're optimistic, but I never like to count on money until I know it's in the bank. And so you know, hope, we'll hope for the best that we get it again. So, any other questions? All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, and after this, we traditionally just uh, kind of go in order. Uh, Ann, we'll put you up first for the DDA. <coughs> Hello, everyone. So since the DDA only has a handful, I'll just go briefly through each one. Um, so most of them will look familiar. Um, but I'll just go through and give an update on where some of those stand. So the first one um, is our economic development fund. So that one we put away 10,000 each year 
um, can go towards property acquisition, grant requests, um, opportunities as they arrive, and that's usually set up $10,000 each year. And then as our budget grows, I put in $15,000 um, in the next few years to increase that amount. Uh, the same goes for our downtown facade grants. So currently this is a, a rolling balance and we um, review those from downtown property owners on a rolling basis. So we award 20,000 total each year and business owners or property owners can request up to $5,000 matching. So this is similar to the economic <coughs> development fund. Um, every year we put a line <coughs> item and then award out based on how much the committee awards um, to what, what applications we receive. Um, alleyway improvements, we have this one um, currently we're working on right now with the city and our design committee. Um, so the alleys that run cutting across 2nd Avenue to the lake, it's our intention to improve those, resurface them, make them more pedestrian friendly. Um, so we have one in the works right now that we're working on and then we have an intention to spend 20000 again um, in the next fiscal year to continue improving those. Our next two, um, public art and place making, and then the one after this is streetscapes. So these are kind of general funds that go towards the beautification of our downtown based on what our design committee works on and what the board establishes. So some of the projects that will be coming out of these two are the mural project, which we're continuing again this year. Um, I'm doing a call for locations and artists um, that we'll hopefully have done the end of this summer. We're also looking at updating and replacing downtown trees. So this can go, some of these funds can go towards that. And then our plan to update bike racks. So we're starting with two larger ones this summer and then we'll gradually phase out what we rent um, to business owners with a smaller version um, that will match those larger ones. And we're using Jake Itema, um, a local blacksmith to make those. So those two, these two for the public art and streetscapes can go towards a variety of downtown kind of beautification and placemaking initiatives. The next one is the downtown retail incubator. So we currently have a letter of interest from the MEDC. Um, this project is in the works to have a small, um, have smaller stalls in a building to rent out to different um, new startups, businesses, co-working spaces. So pending that this project moves along um, with site control um, and some of the other details that we have to figure out, um, we have this as an expenditure that will come up this, um, this coming fiscal year. And that grant that we've been working on is a 90% from the state and 10% DEA contribution, and then an ongoing fund that can go towards improvements, <coughs> uh, maintenance of that building, and other programming that would go with that. Uh, market study market plan, that was pretty self-explanatory. Every five years, we complete an update to our strategic plan. Um, downtown parking modifications. So this is a new one <coughs> that we put in this year. Um, nothing solid has been determined yet, but we know that eventually we'll need to increase downtown parking capacity um, and potentially um, improve the system that we currently operate. So we have we entered this one this year to just anticipate that in the next three or five years or so, um, where this funds these funds can be used towards parking meters, parking lot maintenance, um, purchase of additional lots. Um, again, lots of work needs to be decided um, and determined before we move forward with it, but this just anticipates that coming up. Um, and last but not least, this has been a long-standing one that's been in our CIP. Um, should the State Theater ever come for purchase, um, this would be something we could help facilitate a grant with um, to <coughs> operate it as a community arts center. And that is it. Are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Like uh, Bill, she's four bushes. <coughs> Talk about uh, your new and changing items. Yes, new and changing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the ever-changing uh, world of the fire and EMS department. Um, we have fewer projects than we had anticipated. <coughs> I'll get down to the one in fire in just a minute. Starting an ambulance, on CIP we have a fire and ambulance section separate and our budget is actually all together for the first time this year. Uh, under ambulance, the only thing in this year's request is to paint a new echo unit. Strangely enough, paint jobs are fairly expensive so it just cuts over the, the CIP amount to fall into that category. Uh, our original echo vehicle was uh, donated to us by Besser Credit Union quite some time ago. It had 200,000 miles on it at the time. 
uh, but it was uh, it was a, a nice, <coughs> nice vehicle. Uh, it was a, a 2003 Tahoe, I believe, and just recently we took that out of service with, I believe, 367,000 miles on it. Uh, it finally had become unsafe. Fortunately, uh, we had an opportunity to pick up a 2004 Tahoe with 60,000 miles on it, federal surplus free through the DNR. <coughs> We've gotten several things through the DNR through the years. And uh, it's in just beautiful shape. It's an, it was an FCC enforcement vehicle, and so it's got all equipment racks, and we took all that out, and we're upfitting that now to replace the original Echo unit. Uh, thing is, it's silver, and although the paint's in awfully good shape, silver is one of the colors that sheriff cars come in. And I don't really want to put the medics out in the county in the middle of the night in a silver vehicle with lights on top to possibly be confused. So I'd really like to paint that red so that it fits what we do. Uh, that's the only thing in fire this year, or in ambulance rather. Next year, we have one more monitor defibrillator. <coughs> all been replaced and meet the new standards. This uh, last one is on our last up unit. And we have one more ambulance loading and uh, power cot system before all of the fleet is covered in that as well. Been working on that for a number of years now. Uh, since we started doing the lifting systems and the power cots, uh, we have eliminated 16,000 stretcher lifts by employees per year, and we have completely eliminated back injuries from lifting patients into and out of the ambulance. I haven't had a single one since that. So it's been a really good thing. But that's next year. So this year, all we need is a paint job. Uh, down here in the fire area, I've got some good news. Uh, our major project for this year was to have been ice rescue equipment. Uh, our ice rescue equipment had been uh, quite antiquated, certainly not the cutting edge out there. We didn't have enough of it to equip all the, the people that needed to, to have it. Uh, fortunately, however, the Alpena County Sheriff's Office has undergone a, uh, or underwent a, a fire or a uh, fundraising project, and they have raised all of the funds needed, and tomorrow are presenting us with a rapid deployment craft, uh, the banana boat kind of thing that you may have seen in the paper, uh, and some additional uh, suits and rope bags and so forth that will bring us right up to snuff. Uh, fortunately, all of that has been made available through the generosity of the community and the cooperation of the Sheriff's Department and our agency, and so that project on line one is canceled. We don't need anything else in that area right now. Uh, the other two areas uh, down there is our uh, 800 megahertz portable radios. You already heard about them. We use the same ones. They last about seven years. We've had them about seven years. Uh, we've got three of them currently out of service, so we're starting to to budget to replace those on an annual, annual basis. And uh, I have 2,000, which is under the capital limit, but 2,000 in this year's allocation uh, for hose and nozzle replacement. They do wear out every year. We have to replace so many feet of hose, so many nozzles that just don't make it through the year. We do test all of the hose once a year in the summertime to see if it holds the right amount of pressure for the right amount of time. If it doesn't, we take it out of service and replace it. I'd like to move up one project. In our 2021-2022 uh, area, there is the first of three support vehicles that we're requesting. They're uh, three-quarter ton pickup trucks. <coughs> They'll replace the chief vehicle, the deputy chief vehicle, and the CRR officer vehicle. Um, they are used at this point. They weren't used 10, 11 years ago when these other vehicles were purchased. But they are used now for countywide emergency response. We, our field supervisors use them to get out into the county. Uh, without that, there is no field supervision outside the city limits. So we really do need to send chief officers throughout our service area. Uh, when there's a fire, you're going to laugh. When there's a fire in the wintertime, we can't put the hose back on the truck because it's all frozen. And so we bring any fireman's personal pickup, because we don't have any pickups and pile all the hose in the pickup and bring it back to the station and then roll it all back out and thaw it and clean it and what have you. We can't put it back on the fire truck at that point. It won't fit. So um, so that would be one use of them. Uh, we have three trailers that need to be towed from time to time. The Pub Ed trailer, which was another DNR freebie. It was a National Guard recruiting trailer. You're going to love it when it's done. Uh, we have a hazmat trailer and we have a tech rescue trailer and we have a boat trailer, all of which need to be towed by something. So having pickup trucks around would be a hand, handy thing. And at the Habitat fire, we discovered uh, for the, I think the, only the second time in, in known history for our department, that we had a fire so big and so long that we had to 
have <coughs> the oil company bring a tanker in and refill the trucks in spot in place because they were pumping water and the hoses were connected to them and you couldn't move them and they were running out of fuel. And so what I would like to do with one of these pickups <coughs> is put one of these diesel transfer tanks in the back like you see the contractors use. And if we ever run into that again, instead of the $500 emergency call from Blarney Castle, we'll just fill up the transfer tank and take a pickup out there. Uh, so I'd like to move that up. This is one of three. I'm hoping over the next uh, six, seven years, eight years to, to pick up all three of them. They are replacing a 2010, a 2011, and a 2006, all of which are on their last legs and rusted out. And that's all I have. Any questions? Thank you very much. <coughs> all right. Um, in the planning department, you'll probably notice there weren't any highlights. That was an error on my, my account. Uh, we added one project in late, and I apparently don't know how to turn the highlighting function on at this particular program. So uh, that project is number 66, which is strategic planning. Um, when Rachel came aboard, uh, one of her first questions, uh, when she was reviewing all the various plans that the city has, um, she started asking me about the strategic plan that was completed in 2009, and it's reflected by that poster there, which is so easy to understand. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't give her a lot of answers. This wasn't something we had heavily utilized, and to my knowledge, the committees aren't actively meeting. Um, so. Uh, she, uh, she and I sat down and we're, we've been meeting with various, uh, meeting with NEMCOG and trying to figure out, a putting together a strategy to uh, move forward with a new strategic plan or to replace that one right there. So um, we're confident that we'll fit in the budget. Other than that, everything uh, is on my list is as usual. Um, again, public art's in there because we want to continue to support uh, where we can. Obviously, sometimes that gets cut with budget, but we want to continue to support our public art effort. and. Um, Usually, if we can use that, any funds for that, it gets magnified by the community and other grants and other uh, programs. So it's, uh, it's, it's in there, it's a, we consider it important, but at the same point, it doesn't always get funded, but we're very happy about the public art efforts that we've been having. So um, if you have any questions for me, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Okay. Um, we're gonna change the program up a bit and go to Mike here. He's gonna talk about all our various buildings. Good evening, so I'm just gonna hit on the items which are, are new, um, starting at City Hall. And um, those deal with um, alterations to the, uh, to the clerk's office. And uh, essentially what we're looking to do is, uh, because of the influx of residents and uh, varying transactions, uh, we're looking to upgrade the security um, in the clerk's office. Um, and to provide a better environment for a safe working environment for the people that work in the clerk's office. And um, so it's going to include new walls, new, new service counters, and uh, one of the counters which will be an ADA counter uh, to serve the public. And then um, also uh, it will have uh, the bulletproof glass um, that with service windows through similar to what you see at uh, um, the county, uh, you know, the county clerk's office and treasurer's office that they've done their conversions over there. Um, so that's that's what's with with the clerk's office, um, the council chamber ceiling. Um, that uh, deals with uh, we can't I can't get any more of these ceiling tiles that we're looking at right now. They're they're antiquated, and in fact, just uh, when we had the city managers conference here. Uh, I robbed a few tiles uh, just to kind of put in a few that were damaged. And if you look over top of where council sits, and we've got a few oddball tiles in there. And we just did that just to, so we could kind of make the rest of the ceiling look good. Uh, part of the issues here, again, are the tiles aren't available. The nature of this particular tile um, uh, absorbs moisture and such, and so it tends to quilt or bow. And on top of that, we have nine inches of insulation above there, so that adds to the deflection in the tiles. And what I'm, what I'm looking at doing is, is uh, considering doing is, is changing them to a two by two tile, a shadow line tile, which will have a drop down reveal, replacing the light fixtures. Uh, all the grid work will be repainted, 
and um, just upgrade the, the ceiling here in council chambers. And then the other part of it is to convert the balance of City Hall existing light fixtures to LED. We can um, use these existing fixtures and the balance of City Hall and <coughs> simply change them out to LED self ballasted lamps rather than change the whole fixture for a lot less money and still be uh, highly energy efficient. Um, as well as the other projects I have listed for City Hall. Um, does anybody have any questions related to City Hall? We've done some security upgrades, as everybody's aware of, uh, with camera systems and some other things that are going on, and, um, and we've already we've already benefited from the from the, the camera system and, and, uh, specifically. So uh, this year, ambulance and fire have been combined, uh, even though we show it separately in our in our our sheets. Um, the one thing that's on there is the item number 24. Um, which is a priority three is the apron uh, drain trench. Uh, if you've gone by the public safety facility along Chisholm Street, you've probably noticed uh, some orange cones sitting in the parking lot area or in that apron area as they're coming out. And those are, um, the, the issue there is the concrete is given way and the trench drain um, the trench drain grates are also caving in, and so to buy some time, we filled that whole trench drain in with drain stone so that in case the rest of it should break, it's only gonna go a little ways down so we don't end up damaging a fire truck, which is gonna you know, probably cost a lot of money and another insurance claim. So that whole area needs to be cut out. Had, uh, we, Rich had Shannon go over and take a look at it and it is very costly to repair it. And again, as we look at ambulance, fire, police, uh, we look at shared, shared numbers there. So you'll see that same item come up in the, uh, in the fire section, or the fire part of the, the, the budget, the CIP, to help offset that cost. And what we're looking at doing is essentially cutting that whole uh, trench drain assembly out. We've got to take concrete out. Concrete's very thick, it's eight inches thick and replacing the whole thing and not having a trench drain in there anymore. It would simply drain out to the street because there's a catch basin drain right there. And so, and a lot of the aprons, um, aprons are starting to fail and so it needs to be, we're not too far from having to replace it anyhow. So that, that's that item. And then the next item, stay on track here, um, is a new controls on the ice mill. So as, some can, some people can recall the the part of the issues with the public safety building was our snow. Re we didn't have a snow retention system. Um, then the other issue was is our gutters were filling up with ice, and consequently the drain systems were icing up, and a lot of our pipes were drain pipes were breaking. We put ice melt system on everything. We have ice melts in the gutters. We have ice melts um, in the drains, and uh, and in some of our valley valley areas. But I have no clue as to, unless I'm there when I do my monthly inspections, that there's an issue with a particular cable. Um, a good example is, as I happened to check the breaker box one day, and I had a breaker that had tripped on overload, and so we ended up having an ice buildup. We, we caught it in time, it didn't cause any damage. But with the new control system that we're using right now that I have for our, our heating, air conditioning that monitors the buildings, I receive either a text alert or I also receive an e email alert if there's an issue with heat, air conditioning, or that um, within the buildings, uh, public safety and city hall. This upgrade on the control system would alert me to the same issues if we have a problem with the ice melt system. And uh, the other thing would enable me to do is be able to turn it on and off because we don't I don't typically leave it on through the summer months, though it's temperature controlled. So that's the update on that. Um, parking lots, work, the parking lot lights, um, the, a lot of the lights aren't working, um, uh, require extensive repairs, <coughs> we're gonna convert them to LED lights as well. Um, and uh, to provide better lighting for security reasons um, um, and for employee reasons, uh, you know, at the public safety. 
Um, the additional hose reels uh, was suggested by the uh, firemen and EMS personnel is if we had additional hose reels, garden hose reels for cleaning vehicles and they were central of the doors. Right now they're pulling hoses from left to right so we have hoses running all over the floors. It would be a lot easier and efficient to clean the vehicles plus it would also um, uh, increase uh, safety within the building. And then as we get to fire, it's just redundant um, as far as the same costs. Um, <coughs> you know, with the apron trench, the new controls for the ice melt and the, the parking lot lights. And then um, when we get to police, other than all the items I have on there now, it, it again becomes redundant with those, with those repairs as with something new based on last year's CIP. Anybody have any questions? Great. Thank you. <coughs> and uh, we'll move over to IT then. Steve? Oh, um, nothing, not a whole lot new in the IT. It's a lot of. Uh, just uh, infrastructure upgrades as needed, um, new technology complementary systems. Um, we are looking at a new city hall copier uh, this coming year. Um, that's been coming up and been kicked back a couple years now. Now we're at year seven and we should be at year five with it. Um, and so we've gotten a lot out of it, but it's down for repairs uh, quite a bit now. So it is time to get a new one there. Um, we try and stay in, in line with, with Joel purchasing vehicles, uh, police in car video systems, the tablets, mobile devices inside the, the, the vehicles are, are in the same as same uh, numbers he does each year as it's you know two and one and two and one. So we got that covered. Um, my main item right now um, is uh, GIS corrections for use throughout the city. Um, we have we currently have a GIS uh, system for our parcels. Um, it needs corrections, it needs updating, um, and it uh, needs to, needs to uh, be uh, readjusted on the map itself so we, it, we can make it a little more usable for everyone. Uh, right now it's something that, that Adam and I use and a few other people, but um, we don't really give it to anybody else because they look at it and they see parcel lines that go down the middle of the road, they see parcel lines that go through homes and things like that, and it's, it's really hard to use. I mean, we understand it because we know what it is, but um, to get it out there for everybody else to utilize, um, we'd like to make those corrections. And it's it's been it's been a while now. We need to need to get that get that done. So that's that's my main item that I have. So if anybody's got any questions, any items, let me know. Okay. Thanks, John. You want to tell us about the harbor? Good evening. <clears throat> There's nothing really new. If you notice on the sheets, nothing's highlighted in yellow. It's a lot of the old stuff that gets, gets carried over year after year after year after year after year. Because be, while we get done with this, then we're going to go to budget, right? The dock repair for $150,000 in there, it's probably not going to happen. That was a, We were hoping to get 50-50 grant from the state, but unless the dock was underwater based on the high water levels around the state of Michigan, it's a pretty good bet that all that money is going to be going towards fixing roads that washed out and harbors that are in absolute dire straits. That was going to try to extend the life of our floating dock. I'll come up with something else. Um, the UST, the 85000 in that, that's something that we do because we don't have a choice. We're waiting to see if we have to absolutely do it this year. But we, should, we, uh, we need to get it done. I'll, 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 I'll be. Who is working on our brownfield plan is providing those supporting services to us. Okay. That's funded through, some of it's funded through an EPA uh, right. grant that we have open at the moment. So. so that's something we'll have to do. And then, of course, you know, high water levels, improvements need to be made at the marina. Our operators are coming uh, August of 2021. They're either running again or we are. So the city manager, Rich, and I have been sitting down and looking at uh, what does it look like moving forward. We're going to put a committee together to talk about that before their contract's up to see what do we how, what do we want to do down there moving forward. So uh, 
somebody on the planning commission will probably be on that with that, and maybe somebody on council, and we'll try to work that out beforehand before we go putting money into something that maybe, you know, the building, how much do we want to fix up that old building with our future plan in two or three years, and maybe to take that down and put something up in its place, you know, instead of, we don't want to throw good money after bad. That's pretty much it for the Marine, unless anybody has any questions. Thanks. Traditionally, we let Rich go last. Um, so, do you, Leland or Rachel, do you have anything? Uh? No, not at the moment. Okay. Probably because he has three quarters of the project. <laughs> Only 86 <laughs> percent. I was un I under estimating. I apologize. Uh, I'm going to go through every one of mine. Take your time. This year, we, as we were going through the CIP, we we went uh, updated some some cost estimates, shuffled some priorities around. And a good example of that is in our equipment fund. Um, our item number two, the trackless multi-use vehicle, you'll see that's the one out here with a broom on the front. It's out from the sidewalks, but has, you know, we have a snowblower for it, so and it's used year-round. It's used in the parks during the summer. Um, and also for flail mowing, but this past summer, um, the main bearing in, in the body itself failed. We had to go have one custom made, which was not a cheap process, but it's it's we're just wearing out um, from the age. So we're, we had to move that up in our priority list uh, as far as the vehicles. Um, moving down to lighting, one of the things, it's not new, but just to, to refresh it, the M30, M32 roadside park lighting. We'd had some discussions with uh, John Gilmatt and Thunder Bay Electric. They had indicated that they were willing to provide the labor uh, to install lighting along there between the, uh, by the cemetery on M32, uh, as long as the city would buy the material. So that's where that 60,000, if we were to do it on our own, it would be significantly more than that. But that is just the, the materials alone for it. And again, we are going to continue to do uh, upgrade our all of our street lighting to LED. We're working towards that. We found some new processes, as opposed to changing out the entire head on the street light system. Uh, we can get away with some modifications within the pole itself, and then just in, just use an LED bulb up there. About 60 bucks a piece compared to. 1300 bucks for a new head, so it's we're stretching that out. Into our into our parks, one of the new projects, and it came out of discussions that we had at city council meetings, was to expand and enhance our bike path, bike bike parking, not bike path parking, bike parking. Um, throughout our city park system. So we are putting money in to upgrade and enhance that uh, bike parking. Um, you know, we do have some good examples, Thompson's Park, Thompson Park, it, uh, a bike rack is, looks like it's been drugged down the road. It's in pretty tough shape. So we're gonna be looking at upgrading those and adding more in some of the parks. Um, Big one in there is the CDBG NOAA Shoreline Improvement Project, and we've been working with Adam. Adam has been the lead on it, but we did want to put that in there if it does come to fruition. Um, a significant portion of that, I think uh, most of it is CDBG funds. We have a very small portion as far as in-kind services, if I remember correctly. Correct. We have a 10% match, but that, that's being paid for by community members and partners, and uh, our portion is just in-kind labor as long as they let us do that. But it was something that it did come up uh, last year. That's why it came into the CIP in a, as a first-year project. And then moving down, um, Michigan Beach Improvements, coming out of, as we go through and finalize the uh, Michigan Master Plan, we need to start putting the funding in there, uh, get it incorporated into our Recreation Master Plan so that we can apply for grant funding for it. So. That's why we're looking two, two to three years out. By the time we get uh, the, the recreation plan updated this year and submitted and approved, then we can start looking at applying for grants. Uh, 
for those improvements. Really not, you know, you, there's not a lot of new projects added in here. Like I said, we, we, we updated costs, shuffled some priorities around. But once you start updating costs, you know, there's always so much money that we have per year. And we have to, we have to try to look at falling within those parameters. Um, one of the... Uh, You'll see in, in when we get to major streets, uh, we have the second and third phase of the first avenue resurfacing. Um, we've had discussions with a contractor who did phase one. He's willing to extend those same unit prices out for phase two. And we're hoping that maybe uh, if, if some of our other projects come in under budget, that we may be able to finish it yet this year, but we're not. We're not sure yet, so that's why it is budgeted for both this year and next year. Um, the Harbor Drive reconstruction, that is a Michigan Department of Transportation small urban program. Uh, we are in the mill, so to speak, for uh, 2022 construction. We're on their schedule for that. And that would be a complete reconstruction of Harbor Drive from the wastewater plant around and, and out to 23. Um, it's actually a piece of its Prentice Street, but we called it all Harbor Drive. Um, and that is 375,000, I believe, in Michigan Department of Transportation funds. The balance would be local match funds. Um, sewer collection. Um, we've added a, a couple of, of new projects. Uh, one of them is citywide main hole refurbishment. S similar to what we did with the valve program this last year, we, we spent a significant amount of money replacing valves. Uh, we're going to spend, we've got uh, additional funds budgeted for this year, but I think any of us that drive our streets have seen some of our manholes are getting uh, pretty ripe and uh, getting pretty rough. So what we want to do is go ahead and pick the worst ones and start start doing repair, surface repairs on those. Uh, if we have to rebuild the top of the manhole, then we will. So that, we incorporated that in um, as, as a major new project. Rich, before we get yeah. too far down the road, just one quick question on the First Avenue project. Yeah. I know as we go into that curve that comes off of Ripley, there's a piece of um, guardrail right in that area there too. Does that include replacement of that? Because down there the other day it looked like it was pretty banged up and like it's been run over several times. Yeah, we can. We we actually did a program probably ten or twelve years ago. And we replaced a bunch of sections of guardrail. Mm -hmm. The thing we have to be careful of is um, when, once you touch it, you have to build it to the new standards. So, you know, it is yep. something we have to look at. It was tough because I think there's, if I remember right, there's a driveway right adjacent to it or, mm -hmm. or that. And I think that, I don't, as a matter of fact, Steve, we skipped that one, didn't we, because of that driveway? Well, because it was an MDOT project when we were doing it, yeah. MDOT required us to, like, go crazy in there and do all kinds of stuff. I think stuff we had to terminate the guardrails almost back to their house. Now. Okay. Yeah. So, wow. uh, it's grandfathered, so, <laughs> okay. Good point. Um, um, we've, we've added a couple of new projects in the water production plant. Um, one of them is, is the PI P and ID drawings, pneumatics, and instrumentation. What we're finding is as we start going into this and start looking at upgrades to our instrumentation and controls, almost every contractor asks for a set of uh, drawings of what our pneumatics and instrumentation control is within the plant. And we, we don't have one. It's been piecemealed together. So what we looked at was going in, putting a project together to 
identify all of that, get it mapped out, get it located and identified so that when we start looking at these, we're not paying every contractor on each project to come in and evaluate what's there uh, as they're bidding. Um, and then the, the other one is a, is a water treatment plant process improvement study. This is something that came out of the sanitary survey that the um, Eagle does every year. I keep wanting to say MDEQ, but uh, old habits. Um, they do a sanitary sur survey on our water system every year, or not every few years, and then they, they make recommendations. <coughs> you know, Eagle would love to see us. You need to build a brand new plant. Well, that's not that's not practical. You know, our plant functions very well. We meet we meet and exceed all of the drinking water standards that exist out there. Um, and it's yeah, it's an old plant. It, it goes back into the some of it goes back into the 40s. But we've upgraded technology. We've upgraded treatment processes. We've added it. Processes in there to offset that age. So, you know, we're, we're we're meeting all the parameters, but when you talk about a 70-year-old plant, they start getting nervous. So they, they really want us to look at our process uh, and improvements on there. It's out in the last year because we don't feel it's that critical because we are meeting our our needs, but we did want to put it in there so that when they ask, we can say yes, it is. Are there any questions on, on any of the projects? Not not just mine, any anybody's that you may have. And if quite honestly, if you don't have them tonight, we're always available. Um, fire us an email, give us a call. You know, we're more than happy to answer them. Um, so, yes. Uh, Rich, where are we at with the uh, um, Ontario Street reconstruction? That that is going out for bid. Um, Michigan Department of Transportation. We were trying to hold it off until, because I'm, uh, they're supposed to put the bike path in on the railroad grade adjacent to Ontario Street. I really didn't want to have a brand new street there and have them bring the construction materials in and over that brand new street. That, that project keeps getting drug out and drug out and drug out. So it is slated. I, matter of fact, I talked to Shannon yesterday on that as far as getting that finalized so we can get it out for bid for resurfacing. Okay, and then you'll just check with MDOT again. Yeah. To you. yeah. Actually, I've got I've got a meeting with them um, next Tuesday uh, because, um, because I don't know if everybody's aware of it, a big section of M32 from 23 out to Bagley Street and then out beyond in the county, a large section of M32 is going to get resurfaced this spring. And then also the section of State Street from Richardson out to the city limits is going to get resurfaced. We, we've got to jump in and replace, uh, repair several water and sewer services in there ahead of them. They don't like us digging in brand new pavement. I don't know why. They're kind of funny that way. But, um, so we are going to be jumping in there and doing that. But I, I'll get an update from them next Tuesday when I'm out there. Okay. Um, the only other project that I, that I think was supposed to be done this past year that I noticed wasn't is, it's 11th and Park, right yeah. across from the. The the, bid, the bids were lat. It was supposed to be done last fall, but then due to due to uh, some delays on uh, Wilson Street, the contractor wanted to come in and do it um, real late in the year, and we we told him no. We we didn't want to take a chance on it being that late. It's on their it's on their list to do first thing this spring. Okay. But that project's already been bid out. And You're just gonna push it into the new. It'll it'll be done this fiscal year, but okay. um, like I said. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, that pretty much uh, wraps everything up. Um, I do want to make sure that everyone has recognized Kathy has done a tremendous job putting this all together in this whole process. She is responsible for your package and everything like that. So.
other than that, thank you all for coming and um, sitting through our projects. And by all means, like Rich said, if you ever have any questions regarding any of these, uh, punt us down. We'll answer anything we can. And if not, we'll figure it out. So. Yes. Yes, we do. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs> so that said, uh, for usually the Planning Commission will approve, uh, recommend approval first. And then uh, we'll go to council for to approve and file. So, um, if any planning commissioner is willing to make a motion, I'd be. I make a motion that we accept the capital improvement plan as drafted and discussed. Second. And for move to support, Cassie will call an open. Austin? Yes. Oida? Yes. Gilmore? Yes. Kirshner? Yes. Ben Wagner? Yes. Who votes? Yes. I move we approve the uh, CIP as presented. Second. Hess? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Mitchell? Yes. Noah? Yes. And Wallagora? Aye. Motion carried. Awesome. Well, for that, there's nothing left on the agenda. If you guys want to <coughs> move to adjourn, that'd be great. I move we adjourn. Second. <coughs> Thank you all very much. Okay. Thanks, Alan. Yeah, well, anytime, anytime. I don't appreciate the, the info you give me.